Hey everybody, Atlas here again, again, and today I have for you a premium Grey Nature deck profile. So, uh, Grey Nature, like I said in the previous two videos, is my favorite clan. Uh, this, this, uh, this deck list is pretty much entirely of my own creation, there's no winning list from the top eight of uh, worlds that I'm basing it off of. This is just all me. Uh, so yeah, uh, why don't we get started? Our starter is uh, the new Blackboard Parrot. So like every uh, reboot starter, when you ride on top of it, you draw a card. The reason I ran this was uh, I used to run Blackboard, the old Blackboard Parrot, which was you put it in soul and then give something uh, the ability that when it's put in drops and during your end phase you draw a card, so it, it's literally you just cut out the middle <laughs> middleman by using this. Um, and then Excel markers, because Leopold Excel markers are the future. Um, your grade 3 lineup is four copies of the new uh, School Hunter Leopold, which I'm going to have to explain again, but... Uh, he's got the Excel DF 12k, grade 3. When you ride him, you put the top card of your deck in your drop zone, and if it's a normal unit, you look at four cards from the top of the deck and call up to two grade 2 or less. Or, if it was a trigger unit, you, uh, Leopold gets 15k and a crit. So, uh, this is very good because you get an Excel marker, it works on ride, so you can do the skill and then stride. Uh, it does hurt a little bit. If you go second and you want to stride, but you mill the trigger, so he gets 15k and a crit, but uh, it's worth it just to unlock your crayon tigers and stuff like that. Um, subsequent turns, getting the skill off for the 15k and a crit is kind of worth it. Um, it. Oh, if you write it on top of a grade 3, you do the skill twice in a row. So this allows you to build a board without using your hand, which means that the bedonkulous huge hands that Great Nature builds... Uh, can now be just not used, and you can fill the board and deck thin, and it's a really good card, and I don't need to sing its praises. Um, the reason I don't plan to use SVRs with the premium build is that you want to be striding most of the time, so there's no reason to make it SVR. But, uh, yeah. So, there's four of those. There's three copies of Amazing Professor Big Belly, so this was the main grade three from back in the day. Uh, he, he, on Van or Rear, he's got the success ability, uh, so the, or, is it, yeah, Van or Rear, he did, he's got the success ability, so the still, the way success works is that when a rear guard's power becomes 20,000 or more, uh, all other units on the board with the success ability become successful, um, it doesn't have to be himself. It, as long as he sees something else past the threshold, he becomes successful. So his other skill is uh, when you place him on Van or when you stride on top of him, you can call a card from your hand, and then it gets plus 4k, and at the end of the turn you draw and retire it. And then the last skill is on Van or Rear, GB1, once per turn. Uh, at the end of the battle that he attacked, is it Vanguard or anything? Anything. Uh, if he's successful, you can counterblast one. If you do, pick a rear guard, stand it, and give it 4k. So this doesn't kill whatever it is he stands, but it also means that you have another copy of Crayon Tiger, pretty much. So uh, this means that you can restand the same thing over and over and put a bunch of pressure on the opponent, like restanding something on an Excel circle. This is a very good rear guard. It's a really good backup vanguard. And uh, yeah, so that's why I have it at 3. Uh, two copies of Talented Rhinos. So, um, on the, he's got the success ability on Rear Guard Circle, and then GB1. Uh, when he's successful, he uh, continuous, he gets plus 4k, and when he attacks a Vanguard, the opponent can't guard with zeros. So, uh, this is kind of sort of your uh, win condition, combined with another card and the Xeroth Dragon for the Zoo Nation. Uh, it's a very good rear guard. I didn't really run more than two, though, because uh, you don't want to ride him ever. And, uh, you you know, you draw so many cards that you're probably going to see him anyway. And you draw so many cards, you're probably going to see him anyway. So, 
Uh, I like them at two. On to the grade twos. Four copies of Crayon Tiger, because this... It's been several years. Like, this came out early in my college life, and I've been... I graduated in 2017. It's 2019 now, and this is still relevant. Uh, so, on Rearguard Circle, GB1, when he attacks Vanguard, if he's boosted, you counterblast one, pick a Rearguard, stand it, give it a plus 4k, and at the end of the turn, draw and retire that Rearguard. So... Uh, this is an incredibly important card for extending your attacks, usually, usually this little man right here. But, um, yeah, very, 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 very good. Uh, it's out of four of, it's probably not going to change for a while. Um, I'm annoyed that Bushiroad's next Revival Collection isn't going to have this, because they should have done this literally years ago. It's kind of... A gatekeeper for if you want to play Great Nature and Premium, and I totally understand if nobody wants to pick these up because they're like, you know, whatever number I put on the screen there, because uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. But yeah, very very good card. Um, four copies of the new Binoculus Tiger. So one of them is an Origin Rare. I plan to get three more. If anybody knows, let me know. So on Van Der Rear, when he attacks Vanguard, you counter blast one. Put the top card of your deck in your drop zone, and if it was a normal unit, you draw. If it's a trader unit, you retire an opponent's rear guard, and three of your front row units get plus 5k. So, this is uh, exactly what it was in the standard videos. It allows you to draw more cards, it allows you to pick off the opponent's stuff, which is something that Great Nature didn't have up until now. And, yeah, uh, it's... It's really freaking good, and run it at four, probably, or three if you want to run more stuff. Uh, three copies of Field Glass Otter. So, uh, he's got the success ability. Um, GB1, when he's placed on rear, you can, uh, you can pick another rear guard. So, it's a misprint. Uh, the effect is optional, but it has to be something else. You uh, you give it 4k, and at the end of the turn, gets retired. And then at the end of the turn, if he's successful, you can bounce it back to your hand. So, uh, reaching success is laughably easy. Which means you can call a bunch of these in the early game, and then bounce them all back to your hand, because the bouncing still isn't GB restricted. You can also load up a bunch of, uh, you know, plus 4k dopes onto something that's going to die anyway, and, you know, get all your resources back. I've liked this card for a long time, and it... Uh, yeah, it's a good card. So, on to the grade ones. Three Stride Fodder. They are, uh, they're SP, because I got the SP packs for Great Nature. And pretty much none of it is relevant anymore, except for this. Like, even the crit went away. The Big Belly grade threes that were part of that went away. Two of the Big Belly Strides went away. And, so, and a lot of people's decks, they don't even run the Big Belly Stride. I still have it because of... Nostalgia, maybe? I'm not even sure anymore. Four copies of Monoculus Tiger. Okay, so this is where the fun begins. Um, on Vanner Rear, when he attacks, or when he boosts a rear guard, you Soul Blast, mill the top card of your deck. If it's a normal unit, the opponent can't guard with Sentinels. And if it's a trader unit, they can only guard with traitors from hand. So, what does this mean when you boost a talented Rhinos? Okay, so if he mills a normal unit, the opponent can't guard with Sentinels, and they can't guard with Zeros. So that leaves grade twos. And it's probably going to be bigger than that. Um, or bigger than any amount of grade twos can do. And G-guards, but uh, that's where it gets a little more complicated later. Uh, if you mill a trigger, and it means they can only guard with triggers, but Talented Rhinos mean, uh, says they can't guard with zeros, then they just can't guard it outside of G-guards. So, this is pretty much your win condition, um, along with the Rhinos, and uh, you can pretty much combine it with anything you want, just for a little bit of uh, guard restrict out of nowhere, and is very good. Um, three copies of Silver Wolf. In the back row, he's uh, plus 4k all the time. Um, I run him because he can set off success immediately uh, with any 9k. So 9 plus 12, 21. There you go. So that's a free uh, big belly uh, success. That's a free otter bounce at the end of the turn. Um, 
behind the big belly grade three, that's a 23k column, which means you can hit force numbers. So it, I find it very solid. It's also a 10k shield along with Monoculus Tiger, which means you can, you know, have more shield in your hand just by having cards. There's also three label Pangolin. So his still is GB1. When he's placed on rear, you pick a rear guard and it gets red text at the end of the battle that it attacked a vanguard if it's a 20k or greater. So it doesn't say success, but it has that same kind of threshold. You can soul charge and unflip a damage or counter charge. It doesn't say the little icon, but you know what I mean. Uh, you don't really use soul a lot in Great Nature, so that's whatever, but the, the counter charge mid-battle phase means that if you give it to something like a Rhinos on the, your Excel circle, and then you have like two Crayon Tiger columns and a Big Belly on the other side, that means that you can reuse the same counter blast over and over in the middle of the turn uh, to have three restands, four attacks otherwise, seven Vanguard. That's eight attacks that are all pretty big. Um, and yeah, it, it's a it's a pretty damn good card. It's a it's a decent card to put on an Excel circle too because you're hitting for seventeen. So quite solid in my opinion. Um, now for the triggers, you have uh, two of the uh, the counter charging or soul charging heals, and two of the uh, the new heals. Um, I ran four normal heals before, um, just for extra power when you drive check. But because you're giving power to everything anyway, uh, drive checks don't matter as much, and I like having the ability to uh, soul charge or counter charge mid battle phase, so I can use some of my more complicated G guards. Um, a lot of decks do this, no matter what the clan is. Uh, in some decks, I'll just run, you know, all four of the version of Automatism Koala for more counter charging or soul charging. So in in some, I'll run all of the new heal just because I want the power more. Just depends on where you want your priorities. Uh, let's see. For draw PGs, because I do not need to keep saying this, I don't have a PG, like, the old uh, PG that we were using, the Big Belly one, only works if you have a Big Belly Vanguard, so probably not going to go off, this is better. And then, 8 crit, because you have 7 things that can restand a rear guard, which means you typically want crits on that rear guard, especially if it's like a Rhinos or something, so... Uh, no need for fronts, for the most part. Uh, now on to the G-Zone. That's a sentence I haven't had to say in a while. So you have two copies of Omniscient's Dragon Battle Earl. So, uh, act, you can Soul Blast and flip up a card in G-Zone. All of the units in your front row get plus 4k for each card face-up in G-Zone, and all of your rear guards get, at the end of the turn, retire this unit. And also, uh, when once per turn, when they hit a Vanguard, you draw a card. So... This is a pretty damn good first stride, depends on what your field's like. Um, but it's all it's especially good late game, because you give like 12, 16, 20k to your front row. And that's with Excel circles. So, yeah, this thing's really freaking good. I never really found more usage for it than two. If you really want to use a third one, you can take out one copy of this. I have two copies of... Uh, Omniscient's Dragon, a Funk. So, uh, he is Counter Blast 1, uh, choose a card in G-Zone, turn it face up. You'll notice that him and Bala Earl both have the same generic flip anything you want uh, requirement, which means that you have a lot of space to play in this G-Zone, which I really like. So, after you flip, uh, you choose any number of rear guards, and uh, a Funk gets 4k for everything you chose, and everything you chose get this uh, gets this unit cannot be retired by card effects until end of turn. So, the main reason you want to do this is if you have a bunch of stuff that's going to be doping other things that you don't want to die. But the real main reason you want to use this is because if you do this, that means that things like Night Rose with Skeleton Cannoneer, and most importantly, Kagero, can't ruin your day. Um, I found that most of the premium tournaments I've entered have a lot of people wanting to run Kagero, so that's why I upped it to two. If you don't, drop an off funk, add a third uh, Battle Earl, and you're golden. So, yeah. Both incredibly good strides that can flip anything. Uh, let's see. One copy of 
Crimthers. So at the end of the battle that he attacked Vanguard, you Soul Blast, pick a Rear Guard, give it 4k. Then you can give it an additional 4k. And if you did that and the power is plus 20k or more on the Rear Guard, which it probably will be, you draw a card and at the end of the turn retire that unit. So this works like a ultra-condensed, earlier-in-the-game Battle Earl, more or less. Um, I mostly use it if I'm behind and I have less of a field to work with, and I know that I'm probably not going to be hitting much anyway, but I still want a draw. Uh, so yeah, Hrimthurs is still a pretty solid card, and worst-case scenario, he's a flip target for these two, so it's not a big deal. Um, one copy of Kiel Timka. Uh, you go through your deck very, very fast, and a lot of people just won't die. The steal is, uh, he's got success 25k, so he has to see something hit 25k or more, which again, laughably easy. Um, when he becomes successful, you put four cards from your drop zone to the bottom of your deck, pick a rear guard, give it, uh, plus 4k, and at the end of the turn, draw and retire that unit, so... This is something that you can use when playing against Gize, like if the game is going along and uh, you don't have any counterblast to work with. So um, I quite like it for that reason. You, again, you can also use it as a flip target if you need to, because, uh, like I said, very flexible, this G-Zone. Um, two copies of Mana Garn. So uh, his skill is you counterblast one, choose a copy of him in G-Zone, turn it face up, Pick two rear guards that get plus four at 4k, and then red text when they attack a vanguard. If they're at 20k or greater, the opponent can't guard with grade ones or higher. So, this combined with talented rhinos means that they can only G guard. Uh, that's a thing, and that's a way to kill. So, very good card. I didn't really end up using it more than once, so that's why I cut it down to two. Um, yeah, that's one way to win. There's also two copies of. Sage Saint Professor Big Belly. So, once per turn, GB2. Uh, Counterblast, flip a copy of him face up. Pick a rear guard. It gets plus 4k for everything face up in G zone. So, much like Battle Earl, it gets more bonus uh, for each face up card in G zone. And then uh, it gets uh, you pick a unit, so it doesn't have to be the thing you buffed. And it gets red text when it hits the opponent's vanguard. Pick any number of other units, or other rear guards and stand them. So it wants you to pick Big Belly himself, but probably what you're going to be doing is picking the thing opposite Crayon Tiger or Amaze Belly. So that means you can have a constantly restanding field that, again, is another way to kill. So, a uh, pretty decent stride. I don't really go into it too often, but it's still pretty good. Um, if you want to cut it for either more uh, Battle Earls and Offunks or... Another set of mana arms you are welcome to, but I I like the way it looks, and it has come in handy before. So, yeah. All right, here's the kicker. Zeroth Dragon of Death Garden Zoa. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know if anybody remembers that time. There was, like, a Reddit thread or something, like, almost a year ago at this point, where a guy uh, entered a tournament, and he had three copies of Zoa that he just kept using for like, the cost for Bala Earl and Afonk and things like that. If anyone remembers that, comment below. Anyway, so, uh, he's, you know, he works for the entire Zoo Nation. Um, so like any ultimate stride, you need to have, uh, was it two or three? It's been a while. Yeah, so you need to have three or more cards face up in G-Zone. You need to, um, discard a copy of your Vanguard, uh, for the cost for stride. And then, uh, when you ultimate stride him, you counterblast two, draw a card, call a card to rearguard circle. Its power becomes 99,999. It cannot be affected by any card effects, including your own, so you can't assign triggers to it. And then it gets red text. When it hits the opponent's vanguard, you win the game. So, all right. <sighs> there is a thing you can do where... Let's say you draw a card and you call Talented Rhinos. Talented Rhinos becomes 99,999, uh, which sets off his uh, effects to, you know, gain an additional 4k, because why not? And then the opponent can't guard the grade zeros when he attacks. Now, you call Monoculus Tiger behind him, 
The way Monoculus Tigers still works is that uh, it targets the opposing player with the Dart Restrict. It doesn't say it gives the, you know, the rear dart it's boosting red text and they can't dart with whatever. It just means that, so Talented Rhinos is attacking for 99,999. The opponent can't dart with grade zeros. Uh, if they're playing, most decks will play the draw PG anyway, so that means there's likely no PGs. Uh, if it hits, it wins the game, and then, uh, yeah, so th this is pretty much like victory foolproof, um, unless I have no idea what it is the opponent is doing, and even if they miracle heal, it doesn't matter, because they you win the game. So, this is ultimate victory right here. Um, the reason that I wasn't running the version with Mike Sabro and uh, just like a more obtuse way to get to Zoa was that I had a problem with, uh, if I did that, it meant that I used up more Counter Blast and my opponent could exploit that. So this is a little more flexible. Um, that was pretty much it. Yeah, th that's like ultimate victory right there. I don't typically say that <laughs> ever, but yeah, good card is good. Good combo is good. Now for the G Darts. Two copies of Kundalini. So, uh, when you G-Guard with it, you can pick a rear guard. It uh, it gets red text at the end of the turn, retire this, and counter charge one. And then Kundalini gets 5k shield. So the fun thing is you can do this twice in a row and put the skill on the same rear guard, so then it dies and you counter charge two. That's just a way to get shield. There's also uh, Ardillo. So when you G-Guard with it, if you have three or more open rear guard circles, he gets plus 10k shield. Guess what? This counts Excel circles too. So this is like even easier to pull off now. Um... You can drop a Kundalini for a second Ardillo if you want, but I liked being able to stack Kundalini. Um, one copy of Sankalpa. So when you G-Guard, you Counter Blast 1, pick a Rear Guard, and him and your Vanguard get plus 4k for every open Rear Guard circle. Guess what? Also counts Excel circles. Then, if the, uh, the Rear Guard that you picked is at 20k or more after you do that, you draw a card. Um... This is very good to, like, there's always that turn where you're like, I'm going to need a lot of cards in hand. This is a way to kind of keep that going. Uh, I didn't run more just because you, you use a lot of Counter Blast thanks to Big Belly and Crayon Tiger. So um, I wanted ways to, you know, work around that with Ardillo and Kundalini. So, yeah. Last card is uh, Sheltered Eris Spangled. So a similar card to Sangalpa. Um, when you g guard with her, uh, she's GB1, you counter blast one, uh, choose a g guard, flip it face up. All of your guardians that are grade three or less get uh, the red text that when they're retired from guardian circle, you draw a card. So what it, that means is that you can throw your whole hand at the wall, like I'm going to throw down 2-2-1-1-0-0-1 And then at the end of the battle, it all dies, and then you draw seven cards to replace it all. Um, so it's a way to not die when the opponent is, like, going for game. It also means that you can kind of set up for, I don't know, Big Belly being bigger or uh, Battle Earl being bigger. So, yeah. I don't run the GB8 because uh, the skill kind of ended up not mattering. Most of the time, because more protect gifts and things like that. And if you don't win, you die. Um, a lot of GV8s don't typically tank your resources like that, depending. But yeah, that's my premium uh, Great Nature deck profile. It's been working out pretty well for me. Uh, if you have any things you want to yell at me about it for, or if you want to just talk shop, head to the comments below, or... Uh, Head to Twitter. Um, you can find us at Nexus Core, or you, uh, I am in charge of the at Nexus at Night Twitter for our podcast. So head there and uh, rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one, everybody.